But, you know, once we've looked at the functioning of the cardiovascular uh, system, we then have to look at cardiovascular disease, okay? So we've looked at the heart, the blood vessels, and we know how they work together to ensure that glucose, oxygen is delivered to cells efficiently, and that carbon dioxide and waste are effectively removed from cells, okay? Now, let's look at how cardiovascular disease affects that. So there's two cardiovascular disease types that you need to know about. The first is atherosclerosis, and the next one is blood clotting, okay? So know these events, basically, and, and be able to explain their consequences. So, let's go. Now, atherosclerosis, one, begins with various kind of risk factors causing damage to the endothelium, usually of the artery, okay, because those are the ones that have the high pressure in them, okay, so damage to the endothelium, the damage to the endothelium causes an inflammatory response, again, I'm going over the mark scheme points here, so it's going to be very succinct, but you need to explain this as a story. So, damage to the endothelium causes an infl inflammatory response that causes the recruiting, the recruiting of white blood cells. Very important. Okay, so the white blood cells, so you've got damage to the endothelium here, and the white blood cells come along and in they go, okay? Behind the endothelium, the white blood cells end up here, okay? Now, once they're there, the white blood cells, white blood cells absorb, now remember this, uh, these peop uh, the people that are most likely to have these events occurring are gonna have, A, they're gonna have high, high blood pressure causing damage to the endothelium, and B, they are going to have uh, a diet, um, on, maybe not a diet, but they're going to have high levels of LDL in their blood. So white blood cells absorb saturated fats and cholesterol, saturated fats and cholesterol um, from circulating LDLs. And we'll come back to this, we'll review this uh, uh, as well, but uh, individuals with a high risk or a high risk of developing cardiovascular disease are going to have high blood pressure that causes damage to the endothelium, and they're going to have high circulating LDLs in their blood. So the white blood cells absorb saturated fats and cholesterol from LDLs, and this causes the development of the atheroma. Okay, behind, behind the endo, behind the endothelium. Okay, and the last point would be, remember we're summarizing here, not too much information, that um, as, as this develops, so, so the atheroma can become, can become uh, calcified, okay, calcified and loses elasticity. loses elasticity to form a plaque, an atherosclerotic plaque. These are the key points right here, okay? Now, I will stop there. So basically what's happening is damage to the endothelium happens, white blood cells arrive, and as the white blood cells arrive, as they absorb more and more LDLs from the circulation, Okay, they're, they're forming foam cells behind the endothelium. The endothelium is still covering them. Endothelium is still covering them, but as, as they're absorbing more and more LDLs, this atheroma is causing a bulge into the, into the lumen. Oh, that's a key point that I forgot. Atheroma forms behind endothelium, narrows... Lumen. How could I forget that? 
narrows lumen. Okay, and we're going to come back to this as to what consequence it's going to have. Okay, this is a key point. Actually, let's just follow through immediately. Okay, so we've got narrows lumen, and let's look at the consequences then of this. If the lumen is narrowed, it reduces blood flow. If it reduces blood flow, it will reduce O2 supply or, bear in mind, CO2 removal. Okay? If the blood is not flowing properly, it's going to reduce this and therefore it will reduce the concentration gradients around the tissue cells. Reduces the concentration gradient and therefore this reduces rate of diffusion and the key point is that if you're not supplying oxygen and you're not removing CO2 this reduces respiration this reduces the rate of respiration in cells and therefore reduces the ATP in the cells and therefore cells cannot function cells cannot function okay and if the cells cannot function the tissue will die right so that's that so let's look at blood clotting then hopefully I can remember everything blood clotting again we're going to look at how the different risk factors can initiate these events but the first event of blood clotting is damage damaged endothelium exposing collagen expose, exposing collagen fibers from behind the endothelium so remember we said that the artery has this thick uh, elastic tissue elastic layer well the reason the thing that makes it elastic is collagen okay collagen fibers but upon damage, those collagen fibers get exposed, and two, this activates platelets in the blood. So the platelets in the blood are activated, okay, and when they're activated, they uh, form a platelet plug. They form a platelet plug, which is temporary, okay, but also... They, this causes the activation, activation of another kind of enzyme that's in the blood, activation of the enzyme, thro prothrombin into thrombin. Okay, activation of pro, prothrombin into the active enzyme, thrombin. And what thrombin does, does is it converts soluble soluble protein fibrinogen soluble protein fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin okay and this forms this traps so fibrin the fibrin mesh traps more red blood cells red blood cells and more platelets i.e. it's like a positive feedback more more red blood cells and more platelets to form a blood clot okay now under normal situation just like with atherosclerosis under a normal situation the inflammatory response is just there to kind of heal or repair the damage same with blood clotting. It's there to uh, seal up the blood vessel so that the blood vessel doesn't uh, leak um, the transport medium. However, in people with cardiovascular disease, um, these processes are happening too often and too much. Okay, so what happens as a result of the formation of blood clots in blood vessels? So, blood clots 
blood clots can kind of become free from the um, blood vessel. So blood clots can obstruct can obstruct arteries. And when they obstruct an artery, again, they, it's the same thing. They reduce blood flow, therefore they reduce the oxygen supply and the, the removal of CO2 from cells. And this reduces the concentration gradient, which reduces the rate of diffusion, which means that there's not enough respiration happening in cells, and therefore they don't create enough ATP, and without ATP, the cells that were dependent upon this artery for their supply and removal cannot function. Okay, so this is cardiovascular disease. Let's move on.